Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Nathan and in this video, I want to show you a cool AI tool that was just recently released by Google. It's the Gemini CLI. So just a few days ago, Google released a brand new tool that you can use to bring their powerful AI model, the Gemini 2.5 Pro, right within your terminal. Gemini CLI is a lightweight, smart, and open source AI agent that can help you write code, build apps, and automate tasks like creating videos and images. This tool is also open source under the Apache 2.0 license, so you can inspect the code, contribute, or even adapt it for your own needs. One of the most interesting features of this tool is the free tier. When you sign up with your Google account, you are granted 60 requests per minute and up to 1,000 requests per day, all totally free of charge. This free tier is very generous and should be more than enough for everyone to test out its capabilities. And if you run out of the free credits, you can go for the paid plan or use your own API key. The model used is Gemini 2.5 Pro, the most capable model by Google, which has a 1 million context window, and the performance is as good as Cloud for Sonnet, if not even better in some cases. The program itself is very customizable, as it can be extended with MCP servers, system prompts, memories, and tools such as Google Search. This tool is still in preview, so you can expect it to be upgraded and improved continuously. Now all of this sounds great, so next, I will show you how to get started with Gemini CLI. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below, and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, as it will mean a lot to me, making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Okay, first you need to have Node.js installed on your computer. So if you don't have it already, you can open its website at nodejs.org and click the download button over here and then scroll down a bit to download the pre-built version which uses an installer to get Node on your operating system. If you are comfortable running commands from the terminal, feel free to use the first method up here. Once Node.js is installed, Head over to Gemini CLI repo at this address, I will leave the link in the description as well, and then scroll down until you see the installation step right here. There are two ways to install Gemini CLI, although they are quite similar. The first one is to run the npx command over here, so just copy this command, and then open the terminal or command line if you're on Windows, paste the command, and then press enter. Node.js will get the program from Google's GitHub repo, and once done, it will run the program as follows. Here, you can select the theme for Gemini from these options. I will just go with the Dracula for now, which is my favorite dark theme. Next, you will need to authenticate Gemini to start accessing the AI. To get the free access as mentioned before, just sign in using Google account here, so press enter and you should see your browser opens the Google Authentication page as shown here. Just sign in with your account, and when you're authenticated, this page will appear, telling you that the auth is successful, so just go back to the terminal. And here we can start using Gemini already, for example, type who are you, and then let the AI process it for a moment, and here's the reply from Gemini. Now the problem with NPX is that when you want to use Gemini again, you will need to invoke the same npx command each time. So let's say that I quit Gemini after a day's work, and then tomorrow I want to access the tool again. I have to run this npx command again. This is not very efficient, so if you're using Gemini CLI often, I recommend you to install Gemini with the second command, which has this npm install at the front, because you can then just type Gemini to start the tool. Just copy this command, and then in the terminal, paste this command and press enter. Now Gemini is installed, so when you quit the terminal and want to access it again, you can just type Gemini and the tool will be online. This is just way easier than having to remember the npx command. Next, I want to show you the useful commands that you can run in Gemini CLI. If you type slash here, you can see all the commands available in the CLI, the first command is about, which shows you the current version of Gemini CLI, the AI model used, operating systems, and other similar information. Then the auth option is used to change the authentication used in the CLI. Bug here is used to submit bug report. The chat command can be used to list saved chats, and of course, you can also save or resume a chat session here. 
The CLI don't save your chat session automatically, so you need to save it yourself. Next, there is the clear comment to clear the screen and conversation history, and then compress context to replace them with summary, and then docs here will open the tool documentation. Editor is used to select an external editor that you can use when you want to edit the code generated by Gemini. Next, there is help for general assistance on the tool. There is MCP to see which MCPs you have configured. You can configure it in a JSON file as usual. And then memory is used to give custom instructions such as coding style guides or any relevant background information to the AI to make its responses more tailored and accurate to your needs. Quit is to exit the tool. Stats is used for checking how many tokens you used along with relevant infos. And then you can change team or least available tools in Gemini. That's all the commands available in the CLI. And next, we will try to use Gemini to create a web app, but rather than opening it here in a separate terminal, I will open it inside VS Code to make things easier. So here in VS Code, I already have an empty folder open, and now I can just right click here and select Open Integrated Terminal. And now I can use Gemini inside VS Code. Uh, let me enlarge the window here. And in this terminal, just type Gemini to activate the tool. Okay, now I will ask the AI to build a break breaker browser game with neon style colors and modern cool animations, make it fit the window screen. Let the AI process the request for a while. Oh, and here the CLI switched to use Flash 2.5. Uh, I think Pro 2.5 is having too many requests, so Google routes this session to use Flash 2.5. Well, this is to be expected as it's completely free, but Flash 2.5 is a capable model as well as I have shown in my previous video, so it should be able to handle this request. Okay, it has created a plan to solve the request and ask if it should proceed. I'm going to just say yes, and now Gemini proceeds to execute the plan, and now it wants to create the index.html file, I will just allow it, and then it also creates a CSS file followed by the JavaScript file over here. Uh, let's scroll down over here. So the request is completed and we can run the game in the browser. So let's do that. Okay, so here's the game generated by Gemini CLI. Let's try it out. Um, yeah, I think it works fine, but there is no sound when something happens, such as when the ball collide with objects. So I will go back to Gemini here and then ask to add sound when the ball collides with walls pedal, bricks, and fall outside of the arena. Let the AI work again, and I will skip a bit to when the generation is finished. Alright, so Gemini created placeholder mp3 files for us to replace with actual sound files. Uh, we can't open mp3 files in VS Code, so let's try it out in the browser. Uh, just click refresh here, and there is still no sound here. I guess the mp3 files are just empty files. Now let's go back to Gemini, and here I will say use web audio API for sound, not mp3 files. Press enter and let Gemini work on it again. Here it generates simple sound effects with the web audio API. And then it asks us to remove the sound folder here, so I will allow it. Okay, so everything seems complete, so let's go back to the browser and then play the game again. Alright, now there are sounds here when things happen. Uh, let me increase the sound volume a bit. And there, we can hear the sound of ball colliding with bricks, walls, the pedal, and fall outside of the arena. And yeah, I think this is good enough already. Next, let's try to save this chat so that we can get back to it if we quit Gemini later. So just type slash chat and then save, and then press enter. Okay, I suppose it's safe now, so let's try chat list. Hmm, it seems to be empty. I think we need to... Uh, I think we need to add a tag after the save command, so let's try again. And the tag here will be break-breaker-game. Okay, now list the chat. Alright, we can see the session here. So uh, let's quit Gemini, and then start it again. So now, chat resume. Um, I seem can't select the suggestion, uh, what should I do here? Uh, let's just try to type it. Resume, break, dash breaker, dash game. 
Okay, we can do it by typing. And now uh, let's try again. Oh, we have to press enter here to select the save chat session. I think there should be some hint as to what to do to select a save session. But oh well, it's a bit clumsy, but it works. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. Now overall, that's how you can use Gemini CLI to bring Gemini directly into your terminal. Honestly, I think this tool has a lot of potential, but for now, the experience can be slightly inconvenient, such as having to save chat sessions manually and retrieve them. The tool can also suddenly change the AI model from Pro 2.5 to Flash 2.5, which might hinder productivity gain when building something. But of course, that's to be expected as the free tier never promised to always make 2.5 Pro accessible. If you really have to use the Pro model, then I guess you have to use API key. The tool can still do so much more, such as using MCP servers and generating image and video files. And as it's still in preview, we can expect the tool to improve fast. So let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to explore this tool further. And that brings us to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Gemini CLI tool? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Koei Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.